We're joined by Southern Utah head coach Delane Fitzgerald. Coach, the first question is, last year was a big improvement over the past few seasons at Southern Utah. Just talk a little bit about what your expectations are now going into 2023. I appreciate you recognizing that we went from one win to five yeah. wins. Yeah, all everybody wants to talk about is how bad we're going to be again this year. <laughs> We had we had a very good off season. Um, we think our recruiting class is the best in the country. Um, we brought in some portal kids that can help us immediately, and we're excited about them. Um, the, the expectation, and we're never going to get ahead of ourselves. We're going to do the best job we can possibly do Sunday through Friday, and then tee it up on Saturday and play as hard as we can play for three hours. Let the cards fall where they may. Um, in any sport, and especially in football, you can't look ahead. Can't look ahead. Can't look ahead. We've got to be focused on whoever the next opponent is, get our guys as well prepared as we can possibly, and then let's go play on Saturday. Your recruiting strategy, the transfer portal, we know what it's becoming in college football. How do you balance that along with high school recruiting and even the JUCO circuit? Yeah, the, the, the portal's taking over. The portal's taking over recruiting, and I, I'm one of the old school coaches that's fighting it a little bit. Um, so, so what we've done is, is we, high school-wise, we've got to win the Wasatch Front. We've got to win in the state of Utah and get good players out of Utah. Um, it, it helps with in-state relations. It helps with alumni relations. It helps with retention because those kids don't leave to go anywhere else. And then after we're finished in Utah, we've got to get a good player or two each year out of Las Vegas. And, we, and then for me, kind of Southern California and Phoenix are split equal there. We've got to get two or three players out of Southern California, two or three out of Phoenix. And that's my high school recruiting philosophy. Um, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you this nugget. Going forward this year, we're going to have about 20 scholarships to give. And so we'll have about 20 spots. We, we've got a good senior class that will be leaving us after this fall. We're going to go out and sign 10 high school kids and probably 10 portal kids. I'm not, at this point in time, I'm not a fan of the JUCO kids. Oh, okay. I, I, I like the take and the honesty there. When you look at last season, you guys had some close games where it could have went either way. Talk a little bit about how that built, built some character in your team going into 2023 now that they know what it's going to take to win those games. Yeah, you find, you find out. You find out exactly what young men are made of when you lose back-to-back -back weeks by, by a field goal or less. Um, but we, what we found out is, is our kids are going to tee it up the following week and play as hard as they can possibly play, which is what we want out of them as players to start with. Um, what, what does that do for us going forward? Uh, we know who will compete and who won't compete. Right. L looking at your quarterback, he's here with you today. Justin, you also have Isaiah Wooden coming back at wide receiver, one of the best, I think, duos in the country, quarterback wide receiver tandems. Talk a little bit about their connection and how explosive they could be this upcoming season in your offense. You're, you're right about them being may maybe the best quarterback wide receiver tandem in FCS. Um, but between how good Justin is cerebrally and then how accurate he is as a passer, and he is really, really accurate, and then just how fast Isaiah is. I, if somebody ever put the clock on Isaiah and he was healthy, he's probably 4 3 flat, 4 3 flat, but, but can pick him up and put them down and we're excited about those two the chemistry they have the chemistry they have on the field is pretty special because we'll, we'll go we'll go through a season and you're a uh, season we'll go through a series and we're like hey we've forgotten about isaiah and then he finds him and he finds him at the right times in the right games so excited to have them both back for their senior season we started off the interview. You guys went from one win to five. Now the next step is to win the conference, get possibly an auto bid or even in a large bid to the FCS playoffs. What would it mean to you already making that next step and just in terms of getting your guys experience? Because we know football is different when you get to late November, early December. Our, our football program, our football team, is three or four times better than we were last fall. What's going to happen to us is our schedule is three or four times harder. In the last interview I just gave, they asked about the schedule. We opened at Arizona. We go Arizona State, at Arizona State, at BYU, at Cal Davis, who's ranked 14th in the country. We come home and play Western Illinois, and then we get Central Arkansas, who's ranked 18th in the country in our place, and they're the most talented team in the conference. And luckily, we get them at home, but our first five games are a war daddy now. Um, you, you almost, and I, and I told somebody earlier in the summer, I said, after the first three games, let's, just, let's assess how we played in those first three and then go from there. I'll, I'll tell you this. We have a better football program than we did a year ago. Our record may be close to the same because of how hard the schedule is. Right. And then once we get through this schedule this fall, that in order to go, it takes the exact same amount of effort to go from 1 and 10 to 5 and 6 as it does to go from 5 and 6 to 10 and 1. Right. We've got to put in the effort, put in the work to get there. Do you think that tougher schedule will help you guys later in the season when you get to a conference schedule that you just said is even more, it has an increased difficulty this year? A great question. If we're healthy, 
it helps us. And if we're unhealthy, if we go in and get beat up at Arizona State, get beat up at BYU, it doesn't help us a lick. Now, our school's getting rich off of it. Our school gets a bunch of fat paydays, but it doesn't help us at all. And the final question, Coach, we, we, we know the stars already. We know, we know Justin. We know Aubrey. We know, we know Zay. When you look at the team, is there any young guys that we might not know about as media or fans that you're expecting to have a big year? I see Aubrey as a breakout player because a lot of people don't, th- don't know how good he is. Um, Aubrey's capable of having 70, 80, 90 tackles this fall and, and being a complete star. Um, the, the breakout player, the breakout player is probably going to be Robert Horsey that nobody's talking about. Robert was with us at Frostburg in Maryland. He stayed when we left. Last year he had 61. He got double teamed on every single play that he was in the game. He had 61 tackles from the nose guard position. And then Robert Horsey is going to play nose guard and going to play tight end for us. So he'll play both ways for us as a senior. Maybe the only two-way player in the conference this year. Coach Fitzgerald, I appreciate you hopping, just talking with us at, at UAC Media Day. Congrats on a great season last year and even better one this year. My man, thank you for having me. Absolutely.